All right, man, listen, do I have a video for you guys today. Recently, I have been updating BDO HQ, your go-to place for class guides. We recently got a Draconia guide by Flowers. We got a Woosa guide up there by Floppy Ears. I have updated Awakening Sorceress as well as Sage. There's gonna be many more updates to the classes coming up in the next few weeks. We got a dope Striker guide coming soon as well as a Hash guide. So definitely be sure to go check that out. I will leave that in the description down below. As for today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Perfected Awakening Sorceress. This is the reboot since all the changes have come to the class. So strap in your seatbelts, let's get to it, and let's talk about Awakening Sorceress. So talking about Awakening Sorceress and her skills, the most important thing with Awakening Sorceress is having good frames. If you guys may or may not have noticed, there is a giveaway today, and that giveaway is brought to you by our sponsor, Invicta Gaming. Now, Invicta offers amazing PC optimization. When I used to play BDO uh, back in the day before I got my PC optimized, I was getting around 80 to 100 frames at best. Now, after this PC optimization, I'm getting, as you can see, 350 plus frames. When I'm in combat, it's around 220 to 250. So it's an amazing service. It is around $80. I have a link in the description down below to get you $10 off PC optimization. They also offer the ability to do remote sessions if your PC uh, needs fixed. They also do fully custom gaming PC consults if you wanna get a custom PC built. I highly recommend checking out Invicta Gaming. It was the best thing that I ever did for my PC. And if you wanna win the giveaway for a free PC optimization, all you gotta do is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I will be picking one winner at random. And a huge shout out to Invicta Gaming for making this all happen. All right, so we're finally to Sork and her skills, and let's talk about what you wanna get on Sork when you're first starting out. Sork does take a lot of skill points to use the class, but if you're just starting out, I'll let you know what skills you need to get first so you can practice your Sorceress fundamentals. The first skill that you're gonna wanna grab is gonna be Absolute Shadow Eruption, and this is gonna be a really good CC for you. You also are going to want to grab Imminent Doom. What Imminent Doom does is allows you to instantly release Dream of Doom. So Dream of Doom, when you just throw it out, it is a KD. If you use it with Imminent Doom, this allows you to instantly cast it and it will become a Stiffen. So if we go ahead and equip Imminent Doom, you'll see that now instead of casting Dream of Doom long, I can just instantly throw it out. Now when you instantly throw it out, it's a Stiffen. When you fully cast it, it is going to be a KD. We're also going to want to grab Absolute Dream of Doom as it will allow the skill to do more damage. If we scroll up to the top, we want to go ahead and grab Bloody Calamity. This is a skill that does good damage. You iframe and use Spacebar, and it also is a heal. You're going to want to grab Rushing Crow. This is going to allow you to move forward, and it's another movement skill that you have, and it is also a bound. We're going to want to go ahead and grab Midnight Stinger. Midnight Stinger is going to be a skill that's going to be a stiffen. It's also going to get you out of a lot of animations that are in your Awakening kit. If we keep scrolling up, there is a skill called Absolute Darkness Released. We wanna go ahead and grab that as well as Rebounding Darkness. Absolute Darkness Release is going to be a KD. It's going to allow us to knock down our opponents and Rebounding Darkness is going to allow us to push back and we can also uh, use Dark Step off of Rebounding Darkness. I don't normally ever get Ultimate Midnight Stinger as it sometimes messes you up out of certain skills. So I normally do not pick that one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab Absolute Dark Flame as well. Dark Flame is going to be a skill that is a frontal guard. It's good when you're at range and you need an extra frontal guard, but it does keep you in an animation for a little bit. You can just do the first part, but beware if you do the full animation of it, it's gonna be easy for people to get to your back. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a couple more skills here. We're gonna go ahead and leave Absolute Beat Kick. We wanna make sure that we keep Beat Kick locked. The reason why you wanna keep Beat Kick locked is it will actually cause you problems with uh, certain abilities, and I will show you that in a little bit. But for right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this locked. 
Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to grab our kick, which is important. We can grab crow food. And for Night Crow and Storming Crow, these are your iframes. It's important instead of pressing WW always to iframe forward, what you wanna do is you wanna go to settings, general settings, or no, interface settings, scroll down to evasion and hotkey it to a bar or to a um, button on your mouse. This is going to allow you to iframe without pressing WW and it's going to save you a lot of time and hassle. Something really important that I want to add really quickly when we're talking about the important skills that you want to use. So I was just talking about the iframes and how you can use WW. There is also a skill called dark trade. Now, when you iframe around, you'll notice that it consumes stam. So if I iframe, it's going to consume stam. And you'll notice when I'm out of stam, I have shards. So I can consume 10 shards to continue iframing. You want to have dark trade on your bar because you can trade health for shards and that will give you more shards to be able to iframe around with and you can also get shards back whenever you hit opponents with attacks so using your shards and using attacks are going to be really important ways to keep yourself moving and keep yourself uh, able to keep up in a fight by never fully running out of stam you're always using shards as basically extra stamina to allow you to move around the battlefield more. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab all our dark, remove, uh, dark maneuvers, skilled hunter, infinite mastery, unyielding light. We're gonna go ahead and also grab our shards of darkness. Shards of darkness is going to be a skill that will allow you to max out your shards. And then from there, we're also going to go ahead and grab dark tendrils if you have that if you've done the magnus which is a really good skill and this skill does um not need to be hot barred but it's easier if you do hot bar it to a certain uh place on your ui so those are the important things to get on sork first if you want you can also go ahead and grab these absolute skills at the top you don't need a uh, black wave and awakening now or when you're using Awakening, you can use it though. Um, it is a nice float and you can do combos off of it, but I normally don't ever use it. I do know people that do use it. Absolute Dark of Claws, you can leave. Crowfire, you can leave that as well. Absolute Mark of the Shadow, this is going to be more for PvE. This is going to be a skill that's going to allow you to gather a lot of mobs at once. And then Abyssal Flame, don't need that. Signs of Agony is a skill that you can also grab and this is going to allow you to basically do a ranged stun. That skill does um, need to be hot barred. And if we go over here to Awakening, we wanna go ahead and click on Awakening. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our skills in Awakening. So this gives us access to our Scythe. And from here, all these skills are important. Shadow Leap is going to be your movement. So like this, we're gonna go ahead and grab Vial Plan. Now, Vial Plan isn't a skill that's needed at first. This is more of an advanced move um, if you know how to combo really, really well. I don't use it in any of my combos. I prefer combos without it, but it does do good damage. You're gonna wanna go ahead and pick up Grim Reaper, Violation, Turn Backslash, Karshans, Swirling, Night Crow, Soul Reaper, Wings of the Crow, Nightmare, Flow Re Requiem. You're also gonna wanna go ahead and grab Dead Hunt and I use Core Grim Reaper. Now let's talk about your skill enhancements. Your skill enhancements are really, really important. For here, we're gonna go ahead and grab Shadow Ignition. This is going to be a pre-awakened skill. We're also gonna go ahead and grab Engulfing Shadow and we're gonna go ahead and grab Shadow Wave as well. Now you can use Shadow Hellfire. I prefer Shadow Wave as it's an extra CC. This does need to be hot barred. Now, remember before when I said that Beat Kick will cause you issues. So the reason why it will cause you issues, if we use Shadow Eruption like this, we can then go ahead and go into Ignition and this is going to uh, cause a float. But if you do it fast enough, 
you actually do an air smash. So what that means is it doesn't count towards the CC cap. It does not put them at cap. So if you use absolute shadow eruption into shadow ignition fast enough, since um, shadow eruption is a float, they're gonna be in the air and then you're gonna be able to do an air attack and air smash on the opponent. So it does not put them at the limit. So if I just do eruption into shadow ignition, you can see that I did both of them and it doesn't put them in the limit. Now, the reason why this is important is because if we have Beat Kick unlocked, a combo that you that I'm going to show you later, you're going to do Shadow Eruption into Ignition and you're gonna swap with C. And as you swap, it automatically goes ahead and uses Beat Kick. And that's going to immediately bound them. And that's what you don't want to happen. So Shadow Eruption into Ignition, C swap, it's going to go ahead and bound them. But if you notice, if you have Beat Kick locked, it does not actually perform the bound when you swap. So again, Shadow Eruption Ignition, C-Swap, it does not apply the bound, and that is why you wanna have Beat Kick locked. These are all the very important skills that you're gonna wanna use for your Sorceress. We talked about all the important Awakening skills, all the important Main Hand skills. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a little bit of the movement for the class, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to swap back to my preset. So let me go ahead and apply my UI. Go ahead and turn on my preset. And there we go. Now I have everything that I need. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to go into a deep dive of movement, skill animations, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about shards and how those affect you in combat when you fight, because those are also very, very important. So first, let's talk about movement. Movement on Sork is really, really nice. It's really fun, and it's honestly probably the most protected movement class in the game, as you basically have infinite iframes. But understanding how to use these iframes is what can make you a menace on Sork. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you want to hotbar Shadow Leap, Shadow Leap is going to be your dash skill in Awaken, and it's going to be an iframe. Now, at the end of Shadow Leap, you're gonna notice that it is unprotected if you don't use a move after that. So it's important to either Shadow Leap and then iframe right after, there's gonna be a small gap, or you can Shadow Leap Engulfing Shadow. So Shadow Leap Engulfing Shadow. So you're going from an iframe into a super armor. You can also Midnight Stinger out of Shadow Leap if you want to. So if you're getting chased, you can iframe Shadow Leap Midnight Stinger and then you're immediately in your pre-awaken kit to be able to iframe around, which is really, really nice as well. Another thing that's really, really good. Oh, we got a loading screen. So that was weird. I just got a loading screen out of nowhere. Kind of threw me off a little bit, but another thing that is really important for movement on Sork is understanding how to exactly use your iframes in Awaken. So you have the ability to iframe forward. You can iframe side. If you iframe to the side twice, the second one is always going to be a super armor, but you're also going to be able to have a bound off of that, which is going to be Storming Crow. So if I iframe and then iframe again, so I can iframe sideways and do it, you can iframe forward and then back and do storming. And it is going to be a really good skill that is going to allow you to catch people pretty nice out of your iframes. So that's gonna be really good into movement and you can also do really nice combos off of that. So you can like go in, do a bound, swap, do anything that you want off of that. We'll get into combos a little bit later. Another thing that is really, really good for movement is understanding how to set yourself up for certain um, ways to um, engage at range. So your range attacks, you're gonna have your shadow wave, you're going to have your dream of doom, you are going to have um, your signs of agony. So you can iframe around, shadow wave. If you iframe around and you use your dream of doom instant, it is going to be a stiffen. So stiffen does not CC people for very long. So a really good way to CC off of that stiffen is going to be shadow wave. Shadow wave will apply a float and then you will be able to get a KD after that. 
So if I'm iframing around like this with my movement skills, I can Dream of Doom, Shadow Wave. Now he's still on the ground. I can go in and I can KD or do whatever I want to do to combo that guy. You also have the ability to stun with Absolute Signs of Agony, which is another good skill that stuns. You can go in and do a quick CC. And that is just your ranged abilities that is going to help you when you're moving around at range. So now let's talk about your animation cancels that you have on the class. There's a lot of animation cancels and this honestly takes the longest time on Sorceress to understand how to use all your animation cancels to get the best out of your kit and also to make you a better Sork player. So the first animations that we're gonna learn how to cancel are going to be your main, basically, bread and butter catches. So your Shadow Eruption, which is your Shift F, and also your um, Shadow Ignition, which is going to be your Shift X. Now, both of these skills can be animation canceled by iframing. Iframing is going to be one of your best ways to animation cancel a lot of your skills. So I can iframe Shadow Eruption, you can iframe Shadow Ignition, and as you can see, the skills go off really, really fast, so it's a really nice way to animation cancel. You also have the ability to animation cancel into your scythe with a frontal guard using your C-swap. So I can iframe C-swap. If you notice when you C-swap after an iframe, you're gonna get a frontal guard. So if I need to quickly be able to get a frontal guard up, I can C-swap. And what's nice about this is you have the ability to, let's say for example, get a quick catch, iframe, C-swap, go into you know Grim Reaper, something like that. And it's just really, really nice to be able to combo off of that. Now, as you get better on Sork, you will be able to do more intricate combos and you will learn how to uh, make the most out of the catches that you get on the class. The next animation cancels I wanna talk about is going to be some of the animation cancels that you have with certain awakening skills. So what we can do is we can actually um, animation cancel out of Grim Reaper. So you can quickly get out of Grim Reaper by doing a Midnight Stinger. Now, you don't really want to do that often, but it's just a way that you can cancel out of it fast. Because if you just normally let it go, you're going to do the Grim Reaper and then you're going to be standing stagnant for a second. Now you can iframe out of Grim Reaper. So I can go in like this Grim Reaper iframe, but you're still going to be locked in your animation. And another really easy way to get out of um, your iframe animation in Awaken is going to be having absolute darkness on your bar. Absolute darkness is really, really important to have on your bar because if you notice, when you iframe in Awaken, you're sitting there for about a half second. So it's really easy for someone to time that and to be able to grab you. So what you can do is you can cancel that with absolute darkness. So I can iframe absolute darkness and then immediately go into pre-waken and iframe out of that. Now, what this does is it allows you to basically bait people really well. So I can iframe absolute darkness, iframe, and then I could KD off of that, which I messed up the inputs right there, but you can iframe absolute darkness, and then you can do a KD. So it's really, really nice to be able to learn how to use Absolute Darkness to get you out of certain skills. Now you can't do Absolute Darkness after Grim Reaper, as you can see there, I was trying to press it, but it doesn't do it immediately. Again, if you do like a Grim Reaper on someone, you can Midnight Singer to get out of it quickly to be able to go into the rest of your combo. Another skill that's really, really good to learn how to animation cancel is going to be Violation. And Violation is used in a lot of combos for evasion shred, for high evasion targets. And it takes their evasion down and allows you to do more damage. So as you can see, the normal Violation is W plus right mouse button, and it's a very long skill. There's a couple ways to animation cancel this. You can block, which is going to be your Carson's protection. So I can block go into it. As you can see, it's a lot faster. At the end, I canceled Violation. As you can see, it wasn't the full animation. You left click in order to get out of the animation quick. So I can also not cancel the Violation if I block cancel into it. So I can go like this, whoops. So I can go like this, like that. Now, if you hold down 
the keys for violation, it will do a double violation and it will um, consume 10 shards of darkness. That's more of something that you're gonna do in PVE. You won't really ever use double violation in PVP as there's better things that you can do for damage. Another thing that we're gonna talk about is we're going to talk about uh, things that you can cancel into uh, your violation. So you can cancel Soul Reaper into it by uh, whenever you cancel um, your violation, so you cancel it with LMB, you press LMB again and it will go into Soul Reaper. So you can do something like this. And it will cancel into your Soul Reaper and that is going to be something that you're gonna do for big damage as well. Another thing that you're gonna do and you're gonna notice in the combos is you're going to use a skill that is called, where is it, Soul Harvest. Soul Harvest is going to be a skill. Now this is really important. This is going to give you a speed buff. As you can see, it's gonna give you a casting speed buff plus 10%. But in some of your combos, you're gonna use this as a speed buff to speed up the rest of your combo. But you don't wanna do the full animation a lot of the time. And the easiest way to cancel your Soul Harvest is going to be Swirling Darkness. Now, if you notice, if I use Soul Harvest, whoops, wrong skill. Let's give it Swirling a second here to go off cooldown. You'll notice if I cancel my Soul Harvest with Swirling off Hotbar, it doesn't cancel it fast enough, right? So what you need to do is you need to actually use the Swirling Darkness key input, which is Shift F. So what I can do here is I can Shift Q, Shift F immediately, and it cancels it. So for example, if I went into like a Grim Reaper and then I wanted to do Soul Harvest, I could cancel it with Swirling. So something like this, like that. So you're getting the speed buff and you're also getting Swirling off as big damage. And then you can go into another ability after that. And that is actually something that we're gonna do in a combo later, but we will talk about that a little later on. Other animation cancels that you can do on the class you can animation cancel or basically flow Soul Reaper from certain skills. You can flow it from Grim Reaper by holding the left mouse button. You can flow it from Shadow Eruption by holding right mouse button. So I can do this. I also have the ability to cancel it off of a couple other skills. As you could see before, I canceled it off of Violation. You can also cancel it off of Soul Harvest. You can also cancel the skill off of Swirling Darkness as well. So I can go like this. And those are gonna be your cancels for your Soul Reaper. All right, so some other cancels that we can talk about. We can talk about the cancel with Turn Backslash. So turn backslash is a really good CC and it's really, really nice to be able to catch people fast. So turn backslash is S R M B and you'll notice that it is a bound. So it doesn't keep people on the ground for too long, but you can animation cancel it with iframing. So I can iframe and use it. So it'll look like this. So when you iframe, you're going to iframe and then you instantly want to press S and right mouse button like basically right at the end of the iframe. Now, the timing for turn backslash is probably the hardest animation cancel to get used to for most people on the class, as even sometimes still to this day, I've been playing since beta, sometimes I'll still go to use it and I won't hit it on time and I'll do like the full animation there. It casted fully, uh, it casted the animation cancel at first, but then I held it too long and it did the full one and sometimes it'll just do the full one. You can also cancel your turn backslash off of C swap. So for example, you can shadow eruption C swap into turn backslash. So this one's a little bit harder. So you're gonna shadow eruption, right? And as you shadow eruption, you're gonna hit C and that's gonna instantly cancel you into uh, awaken. So shadow eruption C and you're instantly gonna get canceled. Now what you can do is you're gonna shadow eruption C and then you're gonna immediately put the input for turn backslash. So this one's pretty hard um, at first. So it's gonna look like this. So shadow eruption C and then turn backslash. Now, if you wanna get extra damage, like let's say for example, you, 
Okay, Shadow Leap. So we're gonna talk a little bit about movement as well with this Shadow Eruption. Um, but we're also gonna throw in Midnight Singer from Shadow Leap. So um, remember earlier I talked about how Shadow Leap allows you to get into places quick. So say for example, you have an opponent standing here. You can Shadow Leap behind them, turn your mouse really fast and Midnight Stinger. Now that's gonna give them a stiff. So what you can do is you can like Shadow Eruption and then go into like an attack. You can see swap, go into Grim Reaper or you could um, Midnight Stinger, Shadow Eruption into your Soul Reaper if you wanna do that flow. So that would look like this. But also, it's really important to note that you can um, basically allow yourself to not put people at the limit and get extra damage in with some other skills. So like, for example, we could do um, Midnight Stinger, and then we're gonna do Midnight Stinger, Shadow Eruption, Shadow Ignition, and they still won't be at cap. So it'll be like this. And then we could C-swap into um, either turn back slash, which you don't, normally don't want to do. You don't want to bound as your last CC. You always want to KD, but you could if you wanted to. So that would look like this. Whoops. I went into Grim Reaper on accident. So it would look like this. Like that. And that's how you turn back slash off of that. You can also cancel your, um, if you get the Midnight Stinger, instead of doing the um, Shadow Eruption into Shadow Ignition, you can actually do your Kick into Shadow Eruption. So your F Kick, so you can do like this. Oops, I must have it locked. Go to main hands. Yep, Absolute Shadow, we're gonna unlock that. So you can do this. And that will, um, not put them at the cap, even though you're using two CCs because they're in the air. Once you are doing um, the kick, it's going to apply the float and then Shadow Eruption is gonna hit in the air, so it's gonna be an air attack. Now, the reason why you might wanna use the kick with F, instead of using Shadow Eruption into Shadow Ignition, you wanna kick into Shadow Eruption, is it's going to apply the accuracy buff. So if you look down below at Absolute Shadow Kick, it actually gives you a 6% accuracy rate. So you can do the kick into shadow eruption into turn backslash. So it's gonna look something like this. And you can also do it from Midnight Stinger. So if we put it all together with Shadow Leap, it's gonna look something like this. And that is how you put it all together. Now you would wanna do the Shadow Leap uh, Midnight Stinger a little bit faster if you can. Um, that's just gonna take practice for you to get that down, but that is a really, really nice way to catch people from the back since a lot of classes um, have a lot of frontal guards and especially in this meta, since everyone's so protected, it's definitely important that you learn how to do this so you can uh, master getting at people's backs. I also recommend just practicing the um, turn back slash cancel, um, the C swap, you can just left click so left click, C swap, turn back slash like this. And that's gonna be a really good way for you to practice um, just standing still, how to get the actual turn back slash cancel down. And it's going to be really, really important for you to learn how to do that. Another thing that you have for movement, the ability to get into your awakening really fast is going to be with this skill down here called Wings of the Crow. So when you're inside of your pre-awaken, you can just W, R, and B with frontal guard and it will take you into your awakening. So what you can do is you can actually do like movement like this. You can iframe around. Going to the crow shadow, uh, shadow leap. And you can get some good distance, which is really good. Also after shadow leap, I forgot to mention earlier, you can just shadow leap right into right mouse button block. So shadow leap block. There's still just a little bit of a gap, but um, that's a good way to, for instance, if I was fighting this person, like I needed to get away quick, I could like iframe, wings of the crow, iframe, shadow eruption, turn around and block. Something like that, that's really good movement. 
So that's also a really great way to get that movement off. Another animation cancel that you might uh, find nice to use, it's not really a, that much of an animation cancel. So you can use Nightmare, which is F. So you can press F, go into Nightmare. You can right click and come out behind people. And that's going to allow you to uh, stiffen them really quickly from the back. And then also the best way to get out of Nightmare, uh, if you hit S and space um, when you're in Nightmare, you will go into a frontal block. So I can go F, move backwards, hit space, and it will move me backwards. Now there is a gap, so definitely be careful whenever you're getting out of a nightmare. A lot of people have it timed to know when to actually um, CC you out of it, so be careful. Another way to get from Awaken to Pre-Awaken besides Midnight Stinger is just the ability to use Dark Tendrils. So I can like iframe Dark Tendrils, and then I'll be right into Super Armor. You can also um, go into Shadow Wave. That'll take you into uh, Pre-Awaken or again, the Absolute Darkness skill will take you right into uh, Pre-Awakened. Now, I think I've covered most of the animation cancels. Um, the only other thing that you might find useful, um, now, this is probably something that you'll only ever use once you really, really get good at Sork, but just canceling um, the Grim, uh, just canceling uh, Grim and like faking it uh, with, um, Midnight Stinger, so you can do something like this. So you can cancel it really fast and make it look like you're going into it, but you're not actually going into it. You can also hold your Grim Reaper, so you can hold it and then you can iframe with it. Now you wanna hit space to charge your Grim Reaper with shards. And this is what I was talking about, using shards to charge your skills. And that's gonna come in with Grim Reaper also with um, your Karshans. So with Karshans, you're able to use shards to reposition your Karshans with either left or right plus R and B. So I can go into Karshans, right R and B, go back into Karshans. You keep holding um, Shift and E to attack up to two times with Karshans. And that's gonna consume uh, some shards whenever you move with R and B um, and the uh, D or A. And then also, uh, when you're using turn backslash, make sure that you charge it with spacebar to use extra shards to make your skills uh, even stronger. And then you also have um, certain skills on here like turn backslash. I rarely ever use turn backslash uh, BSR, but you do have Grim Reaper BSR. So whenever you use Grim Reaper BSR, you're going to basically uh, just use shift while using um, LMB and RMB. And this is going to allow you to apply the um, Grim Reaper's Judgment's 50% uh, BSR Rage. So it's gonna look like this. Let me unlock this actually. Make sure it's not locked. Very good, so like this. Whoops. So it's gonna look like this. And you see how it was red and you used 50% of your BSR and that's gonna be a little bit more damage. I also rarely ever use that anymore. Um, I normally either consume my um, e buff, or I'm sorry, I either normally consume my Z buff or use um, my 100% uh, Karshan's protection, which throws out a Sork Ball. That pretty much covers all animation cancels, all the movements on Sork, as well as also covering um, how to use shards. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to actually jump into the combos. So the meat of the video, so let's get to it. All right, so we're finally here. We are at the moment that everyone's been waiting for, the combos. So let's talk about the combos and what are the best combos that you can do. And these aren't necessarily the best. Everyone has different combos that they do. Sork, there's probably like 100 different combo variations that you can do. Now, these are just the ones that I like to do. Now. You can pick and choose uh, different things from my combos and combine them into your own combo and try to try things out on your uh, for yourself as well. The skill add-ons I use are these skill add-ons. Let me go ahead and move this key input out of the way really quick. And you guys can see the add-ons that I use. So these are the add-ons. You can go ahead and take a screenshot of this if you would like to. Now, I recommend uh, your add-ons, you change it to your play style. So if you're gonna use 
you know, the combos that I use, you can use PvE add-ons like this. If you're gonna use your own combos or different combos, try to build your add-ons best to your playstyle. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and we will talk about the first combo. The first combo is going to be the bread and butter combo. So this is gonna be probably the highest damage combo that you can do on Sork. I'm sure that there's another one that's like the highest damage, but from what I found, this is probably one of the highest damage combos on Sork. So you're gonna do Shadow Eruption, Shift F, and then you're gonna hold RMB to go into Soul Reaper. So it's going to be Shift F, RMB, left and right mouse button with space for Grim Reaper, you're gonna charge that. From there, you're gonna go into Soul Harvest, which is Shift Q. After you do Shift Q, you're gonna block, Violation, Cancel It, Swirling, and then Dark Tendrils. So all together, it's gonna look like this. Just like that. And that's gonna be the first combo and that is gonna be your bread and butter combo. Now, all of these combos that I'm showing you, they are going to be on BDOHQ.com. So if you wanna be able to see the combo of the abilities of what they look like um, one after each other with the actual pictures of the skills, you can go ahead and check it over on BDOHQ.com, which will be in the uh, description down below. Now, here we go, we got another loading screen. All right, so now that we got out of that loading screen, let's talk about the air smash combo or the air attack combo. So I told you earlier about how you're able to actually um, use Shadow Eruption and then Shadow Ignition without putting them at the cap. As you can see, he's at the cap, he's immune. Now, when you hit someone with a float, you can hit somebody with an air attack after that or an air smash, and that's going to allow you to be able to not put them at the cap but get in extra damage. So this combo is gonna be Shadow Eruption into Shadow Ignition. They're not gonna be at the cap. From there, we're gonna C swap. C swap, Grim Reaper. You're gonna iframe. You're gonna iframe into Bloody Calamity. Dark Tendrils into Dream of Doom. So the most important part with this combo is making sure that you have Beat Kick locked because if you don't have Beat Kick locked, whenever you Shadow Eruption and you do Shadow Ignition C swap, it will bound the enemy like this because you're applying Beat Kick. So make sure that you have Beat Kick blocked for this combo. And this combo all together is gonna look like this. And that is combo number two. All right, now let's talk about the next combo. The next combo is the Shard of Darkness Quick Finesse combo. Now, back in the day, a lot of combos revolved around this skill, which is Shard Explosion. It doesn't hit as hard anymore, but this combo still hits pretty hard. And you're actually able to, you know, have some swag, have some finesse by actually applying Shard Explosion. So the hardest combo we've done so far is the first combo. The Air Smash Quick combo was less damage than the first combo. And this combo as well is less damage than the first combo, but it's still another combo that is going to be able to apply a decent amount of damage. So this is going to be Shadow Leap into Midnight Stinger. Now, remember before we did Shadow Eruption into Shadow Ignition, this time we're doing the kick, which is F. So we're gonna do F and do Shadow Eruption. So we're gonna float Shadow Eruption. So you're getting the float and then you're attacking them in the air. And then after you do the Shadow Eruption, you're gonna go into Soul Reaper. From there, you're gonna do Grim Reaper, Soul Harvest, Tendrils, and then you're gonna throw your bomb, which is the Shard Explosion. So all together, it's gonna look like this. And then you wanna get out. And that is going to be the Shard of Darkness Quick Finesse combo. The next combo that we are going to talk about 
is going to be your full protection combo. Now this combo is going to allow you to be fully protected the entire combo. And this one's really easy. This one's Shadow Eruption into Engulfing Shadow, which is Shift Z. From there, you're gonna Sea Swap, Grim Reaper, Swirling, Soul Reaper, Dark Tendrils. Very simple. It's not a ton of damage, it's still really good damage, but there's other combos where you can do more damage. This is just, like your, if you go into, let's say, like five people at once and you just wanna try to kill everybody or do as much damage as you can in like a GVG, this is a good combo. So, all together, it looks like this. You wanna get out. That is going to be the full protection combo. Now we're gonna get into the intermediate combos. These are a little bit more difficult. And the first one is gonna be intermediate combo one. This is gonna be Shadow Eruption, Engulfing Shadow, Sea Swap, Grim Reaper, Iframe Turn Backslash. From here, after the Turn Backslash, you wanna do Soul Harvest, but cancel it into Swirling. So. You don't want to do the full Soul Harvest with Shift-Q. You want to do Shift-Q and then immediately, as soon as you do the first hit of it, you want to cancel it with Shift-F. So Shift-Q, Shift-F. So just keep your finger on Shift. So Shift-Q, finger on Shift, hit F. From there, after Swirling, Violation and do Soul Reaper. So Violation and then as soon as you Violation, left click and go into Soul Reaper. So. All together, it's gonna look like this. And then you wanna get out. And that is intermediate combo one. Intermediate combo two. This combo is a really good combo. This one does really good damage. And this is going to actually include a skill called Wings of the Crow. Wings of the Crow is a really, really nice skill. It gives you critical hit rate, accuracy buff as well, and it has frontal guard. So this is going to be Grim Reaper. W plus E for Wings of the Crow, and then you're immediately gonna go into Swirling. After you do Swirling, you're gonna animation cancel Dead Hunt. So this was a skill earlier that I forgot to mention inside of uh, the animation cancel section. So Dead Hunt is S left mouse button. It looks like this but you can cancel the first hit if you do it after swirling. So it will look like this, swirling. And you see how it doesn't do the first hit. It just does the second hit and the third hit. So all together, that combo is going to look like this. Just like that. So Grim Reaper, Wings of the Crow, Swirling, Dead Hunt, Soul Harvest, Karshan's Protection, you're gonna cancel into Violation, Soul Reaper. So again, one more time, all together it looks like this. And that is intermediate combo two. So intermediate combo three, this combo, you are going to go into Nightmare, RMB behind the opponent, Grim Reaper, Wings of the Crow, Swirling, Violation, Soul Reaper, Soul Harvest, Shift Z for Engulfing Shadow. So all together, that is going to look like this. And that is intermediate combo three. So next we have intermediate combo four. This one is a little bit more difficult because you have to shadow leap into it. So it's shadow leap, midnight stinger, absolute darkness released. And then we're gonna go right into soul reaper. From there, we're gonna go into grim reaper, soul harvest, midnight stinger, 
Shard Explosion, Dream, Shadow Ignition, Iframe, Dark Tendrils. So this is the last intermediate combo, and this is probably the hardest combo um, that I'm showing because it has the most inputs. So this is what it looks like full speed. And then get out. So that one's probably the most difficult one out of all the ones that I've shown, but it does good damage. You also, if you really wanted to, after the soul harvest, you could go into swirling. Um, after the swirling, you could probably um, do like a shift Z and then shard explosion. I think you'll have enough time. Let's test it out. So it would look something like this. So you didn't have to do the Midnight Stinger there. I kind of just added it in, but you could have just went into Shift Z after the Soul Harvest. So Soul Harvest swirling like this, Shift Z, and then throw the bomb. Last but not least, you always want to have a Karshan Shred combo. So Karshan's is a really, really good skill. And Karshan's is going to allow you to deal a lot of damage. And this is what deals a lot of damage in AOS as well. So this one is one of the more simple combos. It's Shadow Eruption, Shift F, Engulfing, Shift Z, C Swap, Grim Reaper, Turn Back Slash, Soul Harvest, Cancel, Swirling, Karshans. So again, Shadow Eruption, Engulfing, Sea Swap, Grim Reaper, Iframe, Turn Back Slash, Soul Harvest, Cancel into Swirling, and then go into Karshans. My Karshans is still on cooldown. So all together, that combo looks like this. Make sure you get out before they get up. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the end of the Reboot Awakening Sorceress Guide. I greatly appreciate anybody who watched the whole video and really got something out of it. If you have any questions, be sure to join the Discord in the description down below and message me at any time. There's also other people in there who are also very helpful and knowledgeable at not only Sork, but other classes as well. That's gonna be it for me for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Until next time, peace.